Hello and welcome to the last edition of the Overtime for the 2016-17 school year. I'm your host, Alex Porter. I'll be updating you on all the news and prepare you for the action ahead heading into the summer. Also, the boys lacrosse team will be joining me on the show. Let's head in for the last time this school year. I'll see you in overtime. Starting out in most recent news, March Madness has come to an end, and boy, was it a thriller. There weren't many perfect brackets out there, not to mention mine, but one such bracket in the U.S. managed to have a streak of 39 straight games picked correctly. Besides such an amazing feat, the tournament was full of surprises, and the North Carolina Tar Heels are national champions after beating Gonzaga 71-65. It was a back and forth battle between both teams, but UNC was able to pull away for the school's sixth national title. Since the college basketball season is over, it's the time of year for college players to decide if they should enter the NBA draft or stay another year in college. Some big names that have decided to enter the draft are players like Lonzo Ball from UCLA, De'Aaron Fox from Kentucky, Markel Fultz from Washington, and Caleb Swanigan from Purdue. These young stars have a potential to be good in the NBA, but have a lot of work if they want to be remembered. But as June rolls around, keep these names in mind as they could be drafted highly or somewhere around the first round. Now over to the NBA. This season has come to an end and there were some very impressive records set this season. Before we get to those, let's talk some Cavs. The second 42 games of the season were rough for them, and after a few tough streaks of losses, they lost possession of the number one seed. But they were able to pull it together and face the Boston Celtics last week and beat them by 23 points, 114-91, which put the Cavs back in first where they belong, but managed to lose to the Atlanta Hawks twice and the Miami Heat. So they may not hold the number one seed depending on the results from games here in a few days. As the playoffs will begin here very shortly, I hope LeBron and crew are able to put together a very impressive run like they did last year. And who knows? Repeat. Now, let's go to some very impressive individual accolade set by a very special once-in-a-lifetime player, Russell Westbrook. Back in the 1961-62 season, retired point guard, Hall of Famer, and Cincinnati Royals player at the time, Oscar Robertson, set an NBA record of 41 triple-doubles in a season. In that season, the Big O also averaged a triple-double. This is the only time in NBA history where a player has averaged a triple-double, and he also set the record for triple-doubles in a season by a single player. Until now. Oklahoma City Thunder star guard and my MVP in my book, Russell Westbrook, set a new record for triple-doubles in a season with 42, while averaging one as well. This kind of historical accolade for Westbrook is definitely worthy of the MVP, but others may say Houston Rockets guard James Harden should win. But my vote for Westbrook is for Westbrook, and if Harden wins, then Westbrook will be cheated of something he deserves, plain and simple. He has carried his team on his back the whole season in leading them to the sixth seed in the playoffs. As the MVP race tightens up, we'll see who wins, but my fingers are crossed for Westbrook. Lastly, the NFL draft is in a few weeks, and there are many prospects that have shown they belong in the NFL. The Browns own the number one pick in this year's draft and are more than likely to choose Texas A&M defensive end Miles Garrett. Other top picks in the draft are LSU running back Leonard Fournette, Clemson quarterback Deshaun Watson, and Michigan linebacker Jabril Peppers. It's unknown where these players will land, but they will probably get drafted high. That's all I have for your national news. Now I'll be joined by the Hoover Boys lacrosse team. Today with me, I have members of the boys lacrosse team, seniors Reed Davis and Sam Esterly, along with head coach Matt Gregory. Thanks for joining me, guys. 
Good to be here. So starting with you, Coach, based on your season last year, you guys are so far 6-0 and on the season. You have a game tonight against St. Ignatius. But what are your hopes for, what do you hope to accomplish in the rest of the season? Well, based on last year, we, the nucleus comes back from last year, and we were pretty successful. We made it to the regional semifinals. Uh, I think we have the opportunity to do that again. Mm -hmm. But for us, I think to be successful, if we just compete and play well, uh, we'll be successful by beating Jackson and making a deep run into the playoffs. Right. Well, hopefully you could beat Jackson because, yeah. I mean, in all the sports that I've had on, I mean, every single team that I've asked, what team are you hoping to face? I mean, Jack, they've always brought up Jackson, and, I mean, even though, I mean, I'm sure you guys don't like Jackson. I don't like Jackson either. But, I mean, I'm sure they're always a good competition, especially in the cross. Yeah, great competition. Uh, we have a great history, though, of beating them. We want to continue that. In 15, great. In 15 years, we've beat them 13 times. So wow, we want to that's, continue. Good, that's definitely good to hear. Yeah. All right, so coming to you, Reed, uh, what are your guys' team goals that you hope to achieve? A lot of the team goals that we have are kind of player-based oriented, uh, getting better each and every day, and just being the best player that you can possibly be, be the best teammate, always make the extra pass, and just mm -hmm. being a person that everybody wants to practice around. Right, and then staying with you, what are your individual goals? Uh, personally, indivi like personally, uh, I would like to be recognized locally as a lacrosse player, and obviously as a, as a captain, I'd like to lead the best team that I could possibly be. Right, and I'm sure by doing that, that'll inspire your other teammates, including Sam and your other, all the other juniors, to I mean, follow in your footsteps and be the best that they can be. Correct. And coming to you, Sam, what are your individual goals? Uh, for me, I just want to you know, try to make a state run. That would be real nice, and you know, to improve my game and refine it you know, in every aspect. And, you know, I'd try to be a really good leader on and off the field for sure. Right, right. And staying with you, uh, what are you most excited for yourself in your senior year? Well, for my senior year, uh, it's been cool to see a Hoover team progress every year since my freshman year. So I'm really excited, you know, to see what we can do this year. And I'm excited to finally step into the leadership role, so it'll be cool. That's great. And what about you? What are you excited for the most in your senior year, Reed? Uh, like Sam said, you're just playing with the guys who you grew up with, and there's a lot of uh, potential on our team and I'd just like to see how far we can take it. All right, I'm sure you guys can get pretty far because like coach said your guys' nucleus is coming back this season. I'm sure you guys can be a top team in the Federal League to beat. And then coming back to you Sam, what's the hardest thing about lacrosse? I mean it's a pretty mm -hmm. physical game. Yeah, uh, I think definitely the IQ aspect of lacrosse is like the biggest, you know, what to do in a matter of seconds when you get the ball is huge and definitely say that's the hardest. Right, and you have to always be thinking quickly because, I mean, like you said, it's a quick game. And, oh, yeah. and isn't your guys' motto the fastest game on two feet? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, definitely that correlates. Yeah. And then coming back to you, Reed, you and Sam are both two of eight seniors on the team. So in chemistry on any teams, any sport, I mean, is obviously a big component to being successful. So what is your chemistry like with the other six seniors? Uh, with the seniors, we're obviously very close. We all started playing lacrosse around the same exact time, and it's kind of mm -hmm. the very select few that have carried lacrosse all throughout their high school, middle school years. And it's, I mean, like Coach said, we're just a very close bunch of brothers almost. Exactly, and that's, that's always great to hear. I mean, when you have Coach Gregory and you come up through the ranks and to be finally on varsity, and you guys still have that same core group, that's always really good. And definitely is contributes to your 6-0 record so far. And then staying on that topic, what is the chemistry like with the rest of the team? The chemistry with the rest of the team is probably the best it's ever been. I've played here for four years and each year you kind of get a different feel for how the chemistry is, different amount of players and stuff like that, but this is the first year that like we can say that we're the closest group. We literally all started playing lacrosse at the same exact time. We went to the same middle school teams we did played throughout high school together, middle school, I mean, all the way back to where we started. Right, so how, how is that chemistry different compared to other teams that you've been on in the past with different players? A lot of it is, like I said, who you start out with, and we didn't start out with any of the older guys or anything mm -hmm. like that, so it was like kind of each very separated by the grade level, and the se like let's say last year the seniors were their own uh, this year. But the seniors are kind of bringing the juniors along, juniors, sophomores, freshmen, and stuff like that. So, Right, and that's also really important because as you do that, that leads to great team chemistry. And then the grades below you guys, like the juniors, you said the juniors, sophomores, freshmen, they 
see what you're doing so they can implement it when there's finally seniors on the team. Yep. And then staying with you, what does, as I mentioned, you are you and Sam are both uh, two of eight seniors on the team, and what does being a senior leader to the other players on the team mean to you? Uh, to me personally, it's leading by example. Uh, your mouth can only say so much, but your actions mm -hmm. obviously speak louder than words, and that's usually how I lead. Right. I, always like to include everybody on the team, make everybody feel accounted for, and uh, just make everybody feel wanted there almost. Right, and that's always important to have Coach Gregory. I mean, having someone like Reed, that's like what he said, that's always important to have that one rock, solid person to hold everybody accountable. I mean, the team may, may not like Reed when he holds them accountable for that, but I mean, it's necessary. Yeah, it's very true, and uh, for a team to be successful, you need seniors, you know, like Sam and Reed, to lead by example. But also, you know, as, as Reed mentioned, to bring everybody underneath the, their wings. And what's neat about this team uh, compared to other teams is that when you walk into our locker room, you don't see a group of seniors, juniors, freshmen, sophomores. Everybody's mixed together. It's one team. It's sophomores, you know, you know, talking with seniors, seniors with freshmen. Right. It's uh, it, it's really good to see. It makes it a lot of fun. And that's always so important too. It is. And then coming to you, Sam, what does being a senior leader mean to you? Well, it means, you know, picking up your teammates, you know, when they're down, you know, and trying to play in a way where the underclassmen notice and want to try to play, you know, be like you and, you know, just keep playing consistently and, you know, showing what mm -hmm. being a Hoover lacrosse player really is. Exactly. And then back to you, Coach. We were talking about how these two are leaders for the team and how they mm -hmm. think they're leaders individually. And, but how do you think they play a role into the type of leaders? I mean, we, Reed said what he does to be for the team, mm -hmm. but how is that? Well, I think they're both, uh, they're both great leaders, and, and they both lead in different ways. Uh, Reed uh, is more like a coach on the field for us. He's a, one of the first players we've really had that's had a deep understanding of the game and is able to communicate with the coaches and the players in terms of scheming and, and keeping everybody in line. And then when you watch Sam lead, Sam literally leads by example. Um, we like to say you have to be, you know, you have to fly around to be tough on the field. And when you watch him, he's really what makes it work in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's the key in transition. He's great playing individual defense and he's great playing offense so he's one of those true old school midfielders and uh, we went watch we want a younger kid to say how do you play midfield it's like we watch Sam play and that's that's how you play right and that's important to always have the leader the coach leader player if, if you say and then Sam to be able to do maybe a little bit of everything yeah. so that's always great to have on the team yeah and then starting with you Sam you guys, as we've I'm been emphasizing, you guys are both seniors. And mm -hmm. what will you guys miss most from your whole career as a whole since you began lacrosse at Hoover? What will you miss? Uh, definitely, you know, playing with the same group of guys we've been playing with, you know, all middle school, you know, all playing lacrosse pretty much. You know, seeing them every day, you know, it's going to be a lot different, you know, next year when you don't, you know, have that, you know, seeing them. You know, representing right. North Canada is going to be a lot different. And are you going to continue uh, lacrosse in college? Yeah, I am. I'm still, you know, figuring out which college I want to go to, but definitely going to be playing college lacrosse. That's great. And... Definitely, like you said, it's going to be a great experience to play on the cross, but mm -hmm. you're not going to have the same group, group of guys, but you're always going to have those memories to refer back to, and it just will be great pastime for oh, you. Yeah, of course. And then over to you, Reed. What are you going to miss most from your whole lacrosse career at Hoover? Uh, like Sam said, you grew up with the guys. You look forward to seeing them every season and playing with them, and you see them in the off season, say, so, hey, you can't wait for uh, school season, stuff like that. Yeah. And it's every from everybody I hear, like it's just a different perspective when you go from high school to college, just because all these guys from college are, they're really good at the game and they're there to play the game, not necessarily for the social aspect. Where like mm -hmm. in high school, obviously you're there to play the game, but you know these guys inside and out, and there's nothing, right. uh, there's nothing like that. And will you be continuing lacrosse in your college? Yeah, yep, yeah, I'll be playing at High Point. That's great. And then lastly, coach, we talked about just said how these two, what they will miss most from their careers at Hoover, but what will you miss most specifically from having these two and even the other mm -hmm. six seniors on the team? What will you miss most from them? Well, I'll comment on, on the team in general in terms of, the, of all the seniors. I've been coaching uh, 18 years, 15 years at Hoover, and I don't think I've had a class or maybe very few classes that are really open to everyone. Uh, the atmosphere in the locker room is great, and that's what I love about coaching is, is the, the games are great, but it's it's the atmosphere in the locker room. It's the field. It's togetherness. It's the you know it's the fraternity-like atmosphere that we have, and uh, they do a great job of making everybody feel welcome, uh, making everybody uh, want to be there and have fun playing. And 
And we've had teams in the past where it really wasn't that open. It was more seniors, hey, I'm a senior, I do what I want. But this group isn't like that. There are seniors that uh, make, include everybody, all inclusive. And it's going to be, uh, that's why we're successful. That's why we're winning right now. Hopefully that's why we continue to win. And uh, I'm going to miss them. It's fun. That's great. And before we started recording the show, we were talking about basketball a little bit. And when I had Coach Blackledge for basketball um, on the show, they talked about how he said how the team is, they were senior heavy, but it wasn't really a whole lot like the seniors are on top. Mm -hmm. And that sounds very similar to what you're saying, how, I mean, you guys may have eight seniors, but it doesn't really seem like you have eight seniors, if that makes sense. Like, the team is just all one. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, we have, uh, we have freshmen playing, we have seniors playing varsity, and uh, you really don't know uh, by, by watching, just by attitudes, who's a senior and who's not. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's a great testament to the leadership power of everybody on the team, of, of all the seniors on the team. That's great. So thanks for joining me, guys. Good luck on your game tonight, and good luck on the rest of your seasons. That's all for the final overtime for the 2016-17 school year. Before I sign off, I would like to thank a few people who helped make this show possible each and every day. Thank you to Mr. Tom Wilson, Mr. Tim McCarty, and Ms. Danny Garfield for helping with the process of making each show throughout the year. Thank you to all the NCTV video productions and broadcast staff, and to all the guests that joined on the show this year. Lastly, special thanks to the director of the show, Nick Malloy, for pouring in hours into the production of the show and making it the best every time. I'm Alex Porter, and on behalf of myself and the rest of the Overtime crew, I'll see you next year. Thanks for watching. Yeah.